Welcome to the wonderful world of electronics. If you're enjoying this series, please hit the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel. If, you, if you're joining us for the first time, please watch the earlier lectures as you may not be familiar with the material. This is the third lecture in our series where we're going to apply what we learned in the last lecture to solving actual problems. Before we start, we wanted to associate the symbols that we're going to be using in this and future lectures. We started out by showing you the battery, which is shown there uh, on the right side of the equal sign uh, for the independent voltage source on the left side of the screen. And in actual fact, a battery is not a perfect uh, independent source because the voltage actually deteriorates as the battery discharges. So we use the symbol on the left there to model an independent voltage source instead of the battery symbol. An independent voltage source, all you need to know about it is that it has a fixed voltage forevermore. The voltage does not change but we cannot tell what current is flowing through the device. We simply do not know, and it would vary from problem to problem, but it is not helpful. The main thing about this symbol is that it is putting in a fixed DC voltage, which it maintains independently of the current. On the right-hand side, we have the concept of an independent current source. This symbol produces a constant current in the direction shown by the arrow and it maintains that current which will be marked next to the symbol independently of everything else in the problem. We cannot possibly know what voltage is across this particular symbol but it doesn't matter as a rule and is not relevant to the problem at hand. What is significant is that the current is constant and will be marked next to the symbol. Now, let us see what we are doing here. As you can see, we have a problem to solve which is given us in black on the left. What we have done on the right side is to redraw the problem. Now, what we do in electronics is we focus on the topology. The topology of the network is the way in which the resistors are connected together. And this sometimes poses a problem for students. But if you examine the connections in the diagram that I have drawn on the right, you will see that they're identical to what is on the left. Basically, all we have done is redraw the diagram in a more convenient way. Even though it doesn't look identical, it is, and you can check that by checking the connections of each and every component. Uh, all the resistors are unique in this diagram. Each one has a unique value, as you can see by looking at the diagram, and there is only one voltage which is there. We are asked to find the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor, which is the voltage between points A and B as shown on the initial diagram. It's important for students to remember that voltage occurs between two points. A voltage doesn't occur in isolation. A voltage is across something. Whereas current flows through a device, whether it's a source or whether it's a resistor or whether it's just a piece of wire as shown in the diagram, current is flowing. So we want to find one current and one voltage and we have redrawn the diagram in a more convenient way to do so. Now looking at the diagram, it's going to be helpful to find the total resistance uh, presented to the 18 volt source because then we will be able to if we find the total resistance we will be able to find the total current and then we can proceed from there. 
Now what you see there is we have started on the rightmost side of the diagram where we have two resistors in series, a 6 ohm and a 4 ohm in series. We know that we add them together. So we add those two resistors together to produce a 10 ohm equivalent. Now that will make two 10 ohm resistors in parallel because as you can see here, Looking on the right side, we it is quite clear that once we add the 6 to the 4, we have two 10s in parallel. Now, we really know that if they're equal value, as is the case, the resistance of two resistors of equal value in parallel is going to be half the resistance. But we use the formula anyway that you were given in the last lecture, which shows that the parallel combination of two 10 ohm resistors gives us a total resistance of 5 ohms. So the three resistors in the bottom right hand corner of our redrawn diagram are equivalent to 5 ohms, which is now in series with the 13 ohm resistor above it. So we add the 13 and 5 together and we see that we have 18 ohms for the whole right side of our diagram. We've essentially reduced our diagram from five resistors to two. We have a nine ohm resistance across the voltage source and that is in parallel with a total of 18 ohms. So we have the 9 and 18 in parallel and we work out the equivalent resistance of our final set and as you can see the total resistance of this entire 5 ohm network sorry 5 resistor network is 6 ohms. Okay now I've circled these values to show you where the calculations continue from. We first, going with the orange ones, we do the first two, then we plug that into the second one and we get the 5, then we plug the 5 in with the 13 and we get the 18, then we plug the 18 in with the 9 and we get the 6. And then finally we take the voltage and we divide it by the 6 ohm total resistance and we have 3 amps as our total current. Okay, we have discovered that we have a total current of 3 amps flowing and some of it is going to go through that 9 ohm resistor and then some of it is going through our combination which we worked out was 18 ohms. So we need to know the part that's going through the 18 ohm one which is headed up by that 13 ohm resistor on the right hand side of our diagram. So the fraction of the current that is flowing through the section of the circuit with which we are interested in, consisting of the 13, 10, 6, and 4, is going to be worked out using the formula shown there, where we have 9 over the 9 plus the 18, we refer to the previous lecture, and so 1 amp, 1 amp of the 3 amps is going to flow through the 4 resistors on the right. Now that's going to split and half of it is going to go down through the 10 ohms and the other half is going to go down through the other leg with the 6 ohms and the 4 ohms. Study it until you see why we're going to get half the current or 0.5 of an amp flowing down through the 6 and 4 ohm resistors on the right. Finally, 
we are interested in what voltage is across the 4 ohm resistor and just using ohm's law we multiply the resistance by the current and we see that 2 volts 2 volts is across the 4 ohm resistor or between points A and B. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and just hit subscribe and move on to the next video. We'll see you shortly.